Well, in 2016, do you remember, I approached you uh, to ask if you could write this letter of recommendation for me for a prize in Switzerland, the Elysee Prize, where you apply with a portfolio of older works and then you have to write a proposal of new work that you would do if you get nominated. And I had this proposal that you read and then you came back to me saying like, you know, this is just so uninteresting that you will never get nominated for this project. So would you have any plan B, like another idea? And then you would be happy to write the recommendation. Um, and then I, I, I was happy about you being so honest because you don't get that always from curators. And I did have a plan B and that was about fluxes. And what was it about Fluxus that you were interested in? Was it just this event score idea or was it broader? Uh, I had just visited a couple of weeks earlier an exhibition in Berlin, which was the archive and the collection of René Bloch, who is this very influential curator from, you know, started his gallery in 1950s in Berlin, exhibited Fluxus artists and did all the Joseph Beuys performances and so on. So. I know René since something like 15 years and I have some pieces in his collection so I went to see the show and in the show there were plenty of event scores. Okay, so this idea of an event score was coined in the very early 60s and by uh, an artist called George Brecht who at the time was studying under John Cage and simultaneously um, Le Monte Young made an anthology of chance operations and the idea is to, uh, to have a very quick and easy instruction which anyone could follow and whoever followed it was making an artistic act. That's it and in René's show there was like vitrine after vitrine of little cardboard pieces with text on them and that those were the scores and they are really interesting it's like you know absurdist, poetic, funny, serious, strange, you know, you name it, anything. And I asked him like, because I was really intrigued by these, by these fragments of text. And I asked him like, do you think it would be okay if I used these, uh, like as a starting point uh, for my works? And that's what you gave back to me, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yes. Because René said, yes, it's, it's okay. That's the whole idea of a score, that anybody, anywhere, anytime can execute the piece. Okay, so, so you got the award. Um, I got nominated. You were nominated. I didn't win, but that was enough because that gave me eight months of working time and a very good motivation to, to really present the best I could with this new working method. Okay, so this idea has carried on since then, hasn't it? It has. It's like from 2016, something like April, I started. So, well, that's kind of very short because it's, it's barely two years. It's only two years, but it's over 100 works, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a very productive time for you. The most productive in my life so far. Uh, so what we've got here is a selection of that work. Yeah, and I have the, the privilege of having worked with you on the selection process. Because when, when Paolo Sivon and the director of Serlakius Museums approached me and asked if I would like to do a show here with my recent work, I said yes, of course. And what my job is then is to synthesize those ideas, to translate them and make them make sense for mm. an audience and a space. And simply when you have like 500 pictures, how to pick those yeah. 80 that yeah. you show. Because I think it's very difficult for an artist because they have favorites or ones they don't like. But what a curator can do is kind of cut through all that mm -hmm. and see the body of work as a whole and how it could be divided up, how it makes sense, the themes and motifs that run through. Mm -hmm. I think it's just easier as an outsider totally. to be able to see And that. also with this project, I must say that my deadlines have been tighter than ever before, because usually I have been a rather slow artist working easily five years on one series. But now I had the, f the first deadline was the eight months for the Elysee Prize. And then what happened just after that, I got another prize, this Carte Blanche PMU prize in, in Paris, 
and, and they gave me like six months to do again a completely new body of work. Mm. So I've been just like running against time all the time and being so close to what I am producing, it's impossible to really to see what are the ones that you have to lift up and, and put on the walls. Exactly, because also there hasn't been time for images to circulate in the press or to be the ones that people go, oh, I recognize that, mm. you know, the ones that hold a power in a way. Yeah. There, there hasn't been the chance for that to happen. Mm. So what's so great about being able to work here is that we were able to think about the exhibition purely for the space. So mm. a lot of the work has been printed up to fit the space. And we could think about how to order the work. I mean, it's quite random in a way because you're going room by room as to what would fit here, what would, what co is cohesive in that space. Mm -hmm. And that's a real luxury for a curator to, to have yeah. that. And we had like our kind of working titles for each room, which we don't, then obviously we don't need to tell them. No, exactly. But it, I think that kind of helps to sort of understand that there is something that ties these particular pictures together. Exactly. And um, as you can see from the exhibition, there is a very upbeat, playful element to that. And I think I got this into my head right from the very beginning because Elena dresses in a certain way, which is very <laughs> colorful and... Uh, not now. <laughs> not now, but... Um, and she always looks amazing. And it's always, you always notice your clothes. And I wanted to get some of that personality over into the exhibition. And once that kind of started, together with the exhibition designer, we really all ran with it, didn't we? Mm, yeah. This is something which is quite new to me, to actually be like so bold and courageous with the hang. I've been rather classical, I would say, mm. in my exhibition so far. But it was actually the, the, uh, the exhibition at the Pompidou Centre last year when for the very first time I used bright colours mm. on the walls. And that was such an encouraging experience that then when, when uh, Tarja, our exhibition designer, came to Paris during that show and we worked together there with the scale model of the museum, we already decided that we need to put in a lot of colour. Yeah, absolutely. And the title came, I remember we were down here and you, we were, and I was talking about perhaps having like candy striping this wall. As you can see, I've been mm. pulled back. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, you know, like a playground or a carousel. And you said, oh, what about playground? Yeah. And then the exhibition. Yeah. So yeah. very early on, we knew it had that feel and it mm. knew that we wanted to have that element within the exhibition. And I think it's also like really in the spirit of, of Fluxus. Oh, yeah, exactly. This playfulness and this kind of, you know, what if kind of feeling that yeah. you can just try out things and see what it looks like, experiment in a very like kind of easy way, all while being serious at yeah. the same time. And I think what it also does is invite failure which I think is really important for artists. Mm -hmm. Like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. There's, it's, it doesn't have so much weight behind it mm -hmm. in a way that other kind of art making does. Yeah, I think it was John Cage who said that there is no good or bad, there is only work. Yeah, and I, uh, yeah, I think that definitely is kind of the spirit of the show and also the spirit of the way that we've put it together. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, another element of, and very important element of this show or this presentation of the work here is uh, the box that we've made. Can you uh, talk a little about that? Right, so I've made a number of books in my life already. I've made eight monographs, which are like traditional photo books. Uh, and for this exhibition, I think we knew from the start that we want to make an object which is in the spirit of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. So not your kind of ordinary traditional book format. And, and uh, Fluxus artists made in the, in the 70s, they made a lot of 60s also, they made a lot of boxes that they called flux boxes or flux kits with a little, you know, 
different different uh, contents every time. But that was kind of like one starting point for this idea of making actually a set of cards instead of something that's bound together. So you open this beautiful handmade box and you can take all the works out. It's all the works of the exhibition, all the 80 pieces, each one on an individual card. And when you turn it around, you have my title, the year, and you have the event score, the original title and the year and the name of the artist who originally imagined it. So it's also like a kind of like a reference archive yeah, exactly. I think this was one of the elements of this whole project that I enjoyed the most. Yes. Because it, if, of thinking that, you know, what could it be? Could it be a carousel, uh, not a carousel, a concertina book? Could mm. it be in perspex? And that, that very creative process of having three minds, and I include the designer mm. here as well. Yeah, me and Naluama Candy Graphics. Of, of crunching that through until we all knew that this, this product, this box, mm. was going to be the thing. And it's also something I have never done before. Yeah. So it's also a pleasure to kind of take on something that is a totally unique object. And what I love about it is it's an invitation to the reader in the same way that Fluxus Artists and the Event Score are invitations to future artists. Mm. The, the box is an invitation for the reader to, to try these events. Scores. Yeah, I mean, I could totally imagine a group of people, you know, just emptying it on the floor and mixing and then like, okay, now you're going to do this and then the others watch. And exactly. it's like a way to, to create a kind of fun evening yeah. among colleagues. Exactly. <laughs> so it continues that idea of generations. Yeah. And it's a limited edition, signed, numbered, so very unique. And how does that feel? I feel exhausted, <laughs> but at the same time I feel happy. I feel like it's, it's really rewarding this kind of new turn that my work has taken because I was kind of approaching a dead end after 20 years of using myself in my work, like being in front of the camera for so long time, I sort of had run out of ideas how to present my body, mm. like what position I could take, because I thought I had taken all the positions. And the score has sort of saved me because now I don't have to invent anything, I just follow the rules. Yeah, because also you had used uh, motifs from art history a lot, hadn't you? So yeah. this, in a way, completely freed you from that trope, as it were. Yeah, and at the same time, in a way, it's a logical conclusion because this is also referring to art history, mm. only it's not the Renaissance painting, but it's the recent art history. Exactly. 60s, 70s. Uh, another characteristic of some of the work here is that you work in series. And I wondered if you could talk a little about why you do that, perhaps with this one here. Well, often I didn't really know at the moment of doing the piece if I wanted to be, first of all, if I wanted to be moving image, that's video, mm -hmm. or if I want it to be one photograph or maybe a sequence of photos. So I actually very often, I, I made all of them. And then I was thinking, I'll decide later. And funnily enough, you said that you don't have to choose always, you can show all of them. And for instance, in this exhibition, we have decided to show of quite many works both a still image version and a moving image version, which is really interesting actually. Mm. Because I, I was thinking that maybe it's kind of boring or maybe it gives this idea of indecision that the artist was not able to decide, but actually it, it kind of shows how it is to, to, like what the process is, like how you're looking into something from two different points of view. And for instance, this piece that we have here, the orange event, uh, it's after the only Swedish Fluxus artist that I have come across. His name is Bengt av Klintberg, a charming elderly gentleman who I met, went to, to meet this year, January. And um, the score goes, look at two or three oranges for a long time. So here we did first a sequence of photographs and I love them all, so it was really difficult to pick just one. So your, your invitation of showing more than just one really came good in there. Yeah. 
And, uh, and then the video piece, which is shown in this amphitheater behind this wall, among 19 other video pieces, uh, there again, it's another example of, of the kind of fluxus-oriented working method that I have had also with my composer, Antti Ikonen, who made music for, for a big part of the videos. We worked together with Antti like John Cage worked with the choreographer Merce Cunningham, mm. who would have done his choreography and Cage would have done his music apart without seeing or hearing what the other one was doing. They just agreed about the length of the piece. And with Antti, we did the same thing. So he was composing on his side. I was doing my videos on my side. And I said, approximately three minutes, you know? And then I would just put them together and it worked like a miracle. Every time? Well, he did more music than I did videos. So okay. I had like a it's bigger a corpus from, from which I could select. But I found so easily something to go with every video. And he also has played everything with just one single piano, kind of like prepared piano and yeah, yeah. miking it, contact miking it in a, in a different, with different ways. So what we've done in the exhibition is in many of the rooms we have like a mixed media. We have video, we have series and we have one-off pictures as well. And I think that adds a kind of momentum throughout the room so that every single room that you go through has a different kind of temperature and a different kind of feel mm. and I think I what I really wanted to get across with that was you, the the variety of your working method as well yeah and I mean personally when I walk through these rooms I'm not getting bored I every time I sort of get surprised by yeah. what we see in the next room and that's also an advantage of having a space like this which is composed out of quite many smallish rooms. We have six rooms upstairs and then we have this bigger space downstairs. So you can change, so every room has to change. Every room mm. has to be a surprise, otherwise it does get boring. Yeah. And uh, so it was a lot of fun, I think. Yeah. And I think that's really important to stress mm -hmm. that um, all of us enjoyed the process and I really hope that comes across in the exhibition. I hope so too.